Thank you for visiting the resumed, uh, now now resumed uh, GW workforce meeting. Uh, this is actually our fifth, if I'm not mistaken. Peter will have post for the uh, summer because you know all of you have been to like blockchain crazies and uh, brief summers and things like this, much like this. And in this period, uh, how many of you have been to this meeting? How, okay, how many of you haven't been to this meeting? Uh, all right. So very, very quick intro to this meetup. Uh, this meetup is uh, extremely uh, focused on development. We are not doing any crypto speculations here. And this is the first important thing we are doing. We are talking about development of uh, Ethereum apps and everything in connection with uh, Ethereum uh, technology and blockchain in general. Uh, and uh, the second important thing is that this is not a live chain event. This is our community event. So. Uh, we are always looking for people that want to share something uh, with, uh, with the community. So, uh, yeah, uh, at this moment, uh, this time it's going to be us, me, George from Lunchen, you know me probably already, and uh, all from, from Lunchen. We're going to present to you today a framework that has been developed by us, but is not exclusive to us, and it's open source, and we're going to get a larger community behind it. And we want to share with you what we have done, why we have done it, what hardships have been, how we have uh, had, and how we have overcome them uh, in order to, to build this uh, this tool called Mikrolight. All right, so yeah, I'm going to start it, and then uh, Oli will uh, help you with uh, some very quick demo of what they have done. So let me start like this: How many of you have deployed smart contracts? All right, on Ethereum. How many of you have deployed smart contract on mainnet? All right, <laughs> we get slower. And how many of you have deployed multiple contracts that are part of the same DAP system together on mainnet? Okay, so two, two people. I'm going to run a quick overview of what happened to me the first time that I had to do this. And you guys, I feel that you're going to like, no my way. So the first time that I had to do deploy a smart contract system on the mainnet, actually the following thing happened. How many of you have deployed this contract on the most of you like? Okay, a lot of people. And you have your couple, I believe. And many of you are looking for couple. So what you normally do is you prepare your travel script and you Run your travel migration, it works flawlessly, and everything is like uh, sunshine and uh, foggies and rainbows, and everything is cool. And then you just go ahead and type through on my great network. And what happens, guys? The two of you, nothing happens. Of course, travel just fails miserably, and you don't know what is happening, and you're spending and wasting your valuable uh, meters. Uh, deploying uh, a file of contract that you might guys know is called migration.sol. How many of you have heard about migration.sol? We have all seen it. Does anybody of you know what it's in or what it's for? Does anybody of you know whether it's needed? I know it's not needed. Uh, we have seen uh, this, uh, this removed, but however, uh, travel. Uh, version 4.5, 5 was released last week, uh, is actually failing miserably when you're working on deploying on mainnet. So, formations are not correct, you cannot execute your logic uh, outside of deployment. So, when you're saying uh, deploy, I don't deploy on a contract, okay, it, it kind of works. It sometimes fails, but you can like um, comment some stuff out and try to deploy it again with travel, and it works. When you're doing with initialization, as you, can, you guys might remember if you have been part of it, the meetup when you have upgradable smart contracts from the initialization logic, you need to say my contract don't need in order for the um, storage smart contract to, to be able to update its values. Well, it fails miserably. Uh, basically, Truffle is only good when you're deploying and only deploying smart contracts on initialization logic. Uh, nothing very uh, complicated that you cannot do uh, relationship state uh, between these two different smart contracts and their addresses. So these are the things that happened to me the first time that I had to 
that's not in fact system, it was a system for uh, a manufacturer that we actually had a very common uh, repository, a factory, factory, all of the developers, you know, what this is, in, what this is. Uh, you have to deploy a, a repository smart contract, you have to deploy a factory contract, you have to connect them together, and because all of this is a bread we have to do to initialization. Uh, transaction basic in four teams and travel or travel oh my god I couldn't do this in 24 hours. I had four transactions to post transactions to do and I couldn't do that in 24 hours. Uh, 24 hours. I ended up doing the following thing. How many of you have heard about a library called Libraries? I believe we have we have talked about it at length. Uh, so yeah uh, what we ended up doing is a not just script that includes either JS, deploys everything that is there, and everything works like page. I mean, just the same things, deploy it, just to play all of JS. And I talked to myself and I talked to my colleagues, mainly Dimitri, who is one of my, my ex colleagues, we work heavily on the new lines of the field. And um, we decided that actually, uh, we don't have to do this with most desperate because we can do so much more. Uh, there is much more needed because when Drupal is federal, you need to have an opportunity to, to travel to say when you're actually needed. So this is why this, uh, this, uh, this slide says framework that you can trust because we are trusting Drupal for lots of you are trusting Drupal for Wikipi, we couldn't trust Drupal for many and many that matters to me. And uh, pretty much we ended up doing this CLI plus API library for NPM that employs Peter's chess and is able to do basically all the traffic plus, but better. It gives the control back to the developer. It is very, very durable. So you have to see the demonstration. It basically tells you everything that it's doing. Uh, it again acts like a Swiss Army knife for the for development. You can you have a uh, compilation there, you have on there, you have optimizer there, you have unit testing there, you have code coverage there, you have much more things that we have identified as needed during our work as, uh, as developers. Maybe most of you know that we're like um, a smart contract and blockchain development company and we do this for a living. So we basically experience these problems that we have with Drupal uh, in our everyday lives and we have created this for ourselves and through ourselves we have created this for the, for the whole community. And just as validation for, the, for what I said last, is, this is for the whole community. Uh, there are three major foundations that are giving grants for developing of, uh, open source projects. Uh, and at one level, and in Ethereum, the first one is called Ethereum Foundation, the second one is called Ethereum Community Fund, and the third one is called Eat Price. So basically, all three of them decided that they want to join in on, uh, on Ether Lab, and they have provide a grant for uh, us to further develop this open source tool. This, by the way, is open source. Feel free to contribute, feel free to inspect our code, feel free to like throw some shit and uh, tell us like this is extremely cool or it shouldn't should be done like this. Uh, it, it, it's there. So yeah, we're going to be developing further uh, this tool. So yeah, all of these foundations decided to grant us uh, with uh, further points in order to develop this because it has been recognized as something that is very uh, interesting. And I know that I'm now going to all because I want to see how this works. So I'm going to give this to, to all you who is going to tell you, just going to show you how you can use uh, it like how do you install it, how do you just run the basic things. And two things in mind. First of all, we have developed it online with developer in mind. So we're going to have to see very these little details that are very difficult for the developer. We try to, to put them into the into the line. We really that we have put some of that. And one thing that we believe should not be a convenience and should be a must is documentation. If you want to employ something. By the way, how many of you have checked the Drupal documentation? How many of you think it's correct that it does what it says? Okay. Uh, we believe uh, that the documentation should do what it says and uh, documentation should always be up to date. So we are never releasing a version of it while we're working on the documentation. You can see this in our, uh, in our uh, public uh, request, everything is public. And the second, third thing maybe is that we 
are accelerating for what we are developing, and we don't want to break. If you trust us, we think a lot, we don't want to break uh, your phone. So we are having 100% of coverage on our phone too. Uh, on the API, we are now working towards uh, having a 100% of coverage on the CMI, so that we don't want to break the CMI too. And the next couple of months is going to be done, and we're going to um, make a couple of bounties on uh, the platform called Kitoy, which basically says, uh, here is a task that needs to be performed for, uh, for this open source project. We are putting this so you can even learn from the community to pick a line. And yeah, I'm stopping, uh, stop, I'll stop worrying you and I'll give the uh, room to Toy. Okay, guys, so, so I'm going to show you a few things that you can do with that line. I'm going to start right now. Sorry that I have to sit, but it will be more comfortable for me to operate with the computers. So the first thing that I want to show you, of course, is uh, the documentation of Featherwime, of course. Uh, how you can gain more knowledge about the product that we developed. Of course, the website is really, really easy. It's docs. Dot io. It's really, really easy. So uh, on this website, you can gain a lot of knowledge uh, from uh, knowledge to how to install that Rewind to a very, very deep and um, uh, complicated uh, um, um, uses and points. So you can see on the first uh, uh, page, you can uh, follow our milestones. So you can check where we have been moving or what we are doing right now. So you can see that right now we are going to develop uh, debugging transactions. So first of all, maybe a lot of us asks how to install Etherwime. So it's really, really easy just to know that you have to install uh, Node.js and you have to uh, be equipped with uh, the NPM packet manager, but maybe you know already this. Uh, first of all, uh, how many of you already checked the documentation or use Etherwine? Okay, good. So, the installation is quite easy. npm install dash uh, g for global because we want to install it as a global library and then Etherline. It's very quick and easy and depends from your internet connection and your hardware speed. It will take a second, 10, 15, doesn't matter. So, we are ready, we are equipped with the coolest library. Okay, the first thing that I want to show you with Etherwine is how to initialize your project. What I mean with this, I mean that I'm going to initialize my project, so uh, I will use this project for later creating smart contracts, compiling them and deploy them on a local node or on the remote test networks or mainnet, of course. So it's, of course, again, really, really easy. So, at a rhyme, init. This is the command that you can use to initialize your project. And as George says, we develop it as a verbose library, so right away you can see what is happening on the console. It tells you everything. So you're not going to think, okay, what I've done right now or what is going to happen in a few seconds. Okay, we're ready. So. Very quickly, I want to show you what I've gained with this command. So, uh, excuse me. Uh, okay, cool. A lot of stuff here. Etherwine done a lot of stuff for me. So, I'm. Uh, is it too small? Everybody can see or? Is, okay, I'm going to. I'm going to a little bit zoom it. Okay, so you can see that Etherwine done for me a lot of stuff. First of all, I have a directory, Etherwine store. What we use it for? This directory is uh, using for all of your deployment history. If you forgot something like an address of your smart contract, you can gain it with a comment. Uh, I'm going to show you the comment later because right now uh, my history is empty. Uh, the next thing is the um, directory contract. We will use this, co this directory to create all contracts that we want later to compile and deploy. 
For example, with Ether Rhyme init, you already have a ready, ready to be compiled and deployed smart contract. As you can see, it is with uh, simple logic, but you can use it just for some test or you can use it as a template to continue to de develop something. It matters uh, up to you. So that's what we use for uh, contracts. This is where you, you have to place all your contract, uh, contract files. OK, the next, for, uh, the next um, uh, directory is deployment. This directory comes with already created deploy.js script where you will uh, uh, specify your deployment logic. What I mean? I mean that here you will specify what and where you will deploy. We are going to do it together. I'm going to explain you later what this means. Just want to go through all the folders. Uh, I'm going to skip the node modules. Everybody knows it. So the next folder is test. As you can see again, Etherwine create for us uh, example test.js script with already created unit testing, a basic and simple unit tests for us so we can test our smart contract. OK. So the first thing that I want to show you after that we initialize our project is uh, how we can uh, run our local node, local node for development purposes, for testing purposes. It's again a really, really easy. So I'm going to uh, open a new tab. And uh, the running of the local node is quite easy with just a simple command, rhyme ganache. What this do? So it's very important, this command as maybe some of you already knows, generates your 10 accounts with addresses and private keys. But moreover, these accounts are uh, static, I can say. So you can work with this data in a long term. You don't have to uh, change your private keys, addresses, stuff like that. And moreover, you can see the port that this is running on. And if you want to run uh, this local node on some um, random port of your choose. For example, if you use this port uh, on, on your local machine for something else, you can specify uh, optional parameter and you can pass it as a uh, port. So Etherwine Ganache can be run on port of your choose. You can check this on the documentation how this could be done. Can I add something? Yep. Okay, so uh, I just want to say here that as you can obviously see, we have integrated we have specified the uh, to the static addresses. Uh, and we found in practice that it's very important for you to have a somewhat stable uh, addresses so that you don't always go and specify account one and account two, but you uh, actually know the, the address and the private key. Uh, this is especially important when you're working with uh, integers. And the second uh, thing notable here is that it has enormous amount of behavior behind it. So if you are developing an ICO campaign, I know that at least one of you have developed uh, an ICO campaign, uh, you would need a lot of uh, interest in order to unit test your uh, ICO smart contracts because you obviously have to the result enough for your ICO. And the third important thing is that we have purposefully embedded uh, the national to eat the line because we have added some conveniences uh, in the API of the line that allows to not specify uh, many settings like ports or where does it run, and it still works. So basically, if you're already running the line with hash, you will see later that when you're deployed, you don't have to specify anything about the uh, uh, environment that you're deployed on, and we can still deploy like without writing too much code. Too much code. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so is this going to ask support in the unit testing with the coverage? Because usually you need to run separate one. No, yeah, the coverage is uh, is run on the phone different. Uh, okay. Different yeah. okay, as George says, um, later you will see how we can deploy uh, really easy using just a single command because our um, uh, we developed uh, um, as how to say, like an Etherwine Ganache deployer, which knows about these uh, 10 accounts, 
So by default, we take the first one, first uh, uh, private, key, private key of the first one. So you can deploy really simply just with a single command, or you can specify additional parameters to the command. But first of all, I want to show you how we can compile with other rhyme. So again, it is with a single command and very simple. It's at rhyme compile, and now Again, you can see the verbosness of the process. So, Ethereum tells you everything that you have to know. So, compilation finished successful. Okay, what happens right now? I'm opening again the project that Ethereum generates for me, and I'm going to see that there is a new folder called build. Okay, so in this folder, by default, uh, we store uh, the compiled contract. You will find, find uh, Every compiled contract here, as you can see, it's with a JSON format, and you already know uh, what all the parameters mean. So this is the simple compile. Of course, you can check by documentation how you can pass additional parameters to compile different files from different folders, or you can run, uh, for example, um, a command that uh, says how many times the compiler can uh, have to go through your code and optimize it. Okay, uh, the next thing that I want to show you is uh, how we can deploy, a simple deploy. First of all, I have to note that we already, uh, as I showed you, have a, um, a smart contract logic. Oh, sorry, not here, uh, in the deployment. So uh, here is the place that uh, we will specify our deployment procedure. And right now you can see that by default, we include the line factory deployed contract from the folder build. And we said, we have a, a here a variable set that we want to make a new Etherwine and then Etherwine ganache deployer. But where we uh, can take more knowledge for this deployer uh, in the documentation, when you open it, um, you have to go in Etherrhyme library API, and then on the section of the deployer, and then we have deployers. So here you can find uh, the information about all the deployers that we have and that we can use using Etherrhyme. So we have a Infura private key deployer, which using the, the Infura service. We have a JSON RPC private key deployer. We have Etherrhyme Ganache Deployer. That was the deployer that, uh, that I told you earlier, that this deployer knows about uh, our accounts that were generated using Etherrhyme Ganache command that uh, runs our local node for testing purposes. So I'm going to show you how we can deploy our smart contract just with a single command. As you can see, uh, all the deployers uh, has optional parameters that you can pass so if you are interested, you can uh, later check them and experiment with them. So I'm going to show you just a simple deploy with a simple command. It's really easy, again, just to note that for Ganache deploy, you have to be running your local Etherrhyme Ganache node. So we, we already <laughs> deployed so fast on the local node. So you can see what uh, Etherrhyme tells you on the console. First of all, we have compilation finished successful. Why? Because by default, we compile before the deploy. You can turn it off if you want with optional parameter. Uh, then what Etherrhyme uh, says is deploy is set to deploy from the address. This is the first address of our 10 accounts that is generated with Etherrhyme ganache command then the network that we are going to deploy on. After that, we have the name of the contract that we are going to deploy. And it says that it's deploying the right contract. And then we have the address of the already deployed contract. And we have a note that our deployment script finished successfully. After that, we always have a report. This report... What? Zoom out already for your yeah, but I zoom it. I mean, uh, it's command bias. Mm, command what? Command bias. Mm, okay. Ah, you mean to zoom it out to to see the responsiveness of the 
uh, yeah. terminal. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it looks like different on my screen. Okay, so uh, after uh, the deployment procedure, we always have a report. Right now, we deploy a simple contract, and it's a single, as you can see. But imagine if we have a system of uh, smart contracts. Here, you can gain uh, all that you need for your contracts. For example, event time, executor, name, or label. Uh, the label uh, uh, field, uh, you can check it on the documentation, but you can set a label for your transactions that you can use like for initial transactions of your smart contract and you can specify a label because uh, this would be easy for you if you want to see what is what is happening with your deployment procedure then we have a transaction hash then we have a status gas price gas used and again the result of the uh, address as a result of the compiled contract Sir? yep You mean if we have um, a smart contract that is failing and it will uh, like yeah. affect the other one? For example, yeah. For example, if you say if you deploy the contract asynchronously, and the other contract will fail, and you get the result, or you have first contract, next contract, next contract, next contract, next contract. Yeah. For deployment, it's more than a bit surprised. Then for unit testing, you can specify for initialization of the transaction, you can. Choose for yourself. You might want to wait for it. You might want to wait for it. For deployment, you decided that it's very, very important to actually do everything synchronously. Yes. So yeah, it's important. Thank you. Okay, let's continue. Um, so we already deployed our simple smart contract. I'm going to show you how we can gain a history of what we have done. So the comment is Etherwim history. And it gives you a briefly report on what you have deployed already. You can see we have just a simple um, uh, receipt, and we have also execution ID. And when you work a lot of with Etherwime, you will need this command more and more. I use it frequently already, and you can see that uh, this uh, history will grow up. So you can specify. You can see on the, on the documentation how you can specify how many results the history command will return you. So it will return you the latest results with the number that you have specified in the command yeah, as a parameter. Want, uh, uh, okay, uh, like uh, in Fura? No, just, just ah, okay. 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 So we have something more. Okay. I'm writing all the comments just uh, in purpose. I don't want to return them just to, so the people can like see what is happening. Yeah, That's so you can see, yeah. guys, the, the, the history of the two executions that we did. So you can see very different transaction actions. You can see uh, very different uh, results. Yeah, OK. Sorry for oh, it's OK. Um, many of you maybe will ask how we can run our unit tests that I showed you already in the test folder. So it's, again, really easy, just with the command npm test. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm thinking about npm. <laughs> OK. So this, by default, will take all the uh, files uh, from test folder, and we will execute them. But if you want to specify another uh, test instructions, unit tests, you can specify it again with uh, additional parameters and you can uh, find information in the documentation. So, uh, as George said, again, you can see the verbosness of the process. Here you can see uh, the result of the tests and right now we have just a single unit test and it's passing, which is good for us. I wish of you a lot of pass <laughs> tests, yeah. Um, okay, uh, if we have time, maybe we can just uh, observe our deployers. Like. Well, let's, so basically guys, this is what um, 
both in the line does. We also have uh, we're working hard on, uh, on coverage, so you can guys see your line coverage. Uh, I'll make it much more stable as uh, one line uh, already already set. So there is uh, inline coverage, but we obviously have just single test and we cannot show uh, uh, coverage, but it's uh, it's already there, and we're working hard on making it even more stable as a, as an API so that you can check your coverage. By the way, you always will have hundred percent coverage on your smart contracts. It's important. You will take me happy in a year back. Um, yeah, pretty much this is what Nikolai does. Uh, maybe we can uh, take just a little bit of time so that we can talk about what's in the future, and maybe we can have some questions from the audience if you guys have any questions. So, yeah, pretty much this is it. So, the next things that are coming up first of all, we want to stabilize uh, the API, which, is, by the way, is stable, but we want to make sure that we have a uh, unit test. Discovering the CLI code so that we know that when we are features, we don't break it and we uh, hope that you guys are uh, doing and jobs, of course. And the second thing that we're going to be working on is uh, the bugger because one thing, my one major thing that uh, Trouble has in the last few thousand is uh, the bugging, the bugging functionality so that you can do your, um, your transactions. I can argue though that if you have written 100% coverage, but this is a personal decision, and everyone can, uh, can can decide on this. And the last thing is we are now starting thinking about um, having a uh, scaffolding uh, functionality, which basically means that once you have done a deploy, you can specify I want a scaffolding. Uh, I want a code to be scaffolded for my execution number one, which basically creates uh, a, a template code in, in language or specification, let's say JavaScript, uh, that is going to be able to create me a connection between uh, or, or a client in JavaScript to a by, for example, line factory that is deployed on address 0x9 and uh, other things that you can see that we are going to be working on, maybe if you can open up uh, GitHub of it, uh, Peter Lime. GitHub. Yeah. Okay, no worries. Uh. <clears throat> and you can go ahead and see the issues, inspect the issues. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so you can see we have already put a long list of enhancements. We have basically uh, crowdsourced. You can see the help wanted uh, uh, issue. Uh, basically, we have placed a bounty on uh, our framework to say to us, the community, what needs to be there in order for the line to be to be best for you to, to use it. And we have had like a massive response. We have like uh, 15 to 20 suggestions of what should be there. And you can see we have uh, drawn all of them uh, in the side, and uh, we have made issues for them. So we're working hard on this. And yeah, pretty much this is it. Guys, from from our side, and yeah, any questions are welcome, and we're looking forward to that. Is there any good uh, API inside the code? I mean, not inside the CLI. Yes. Uh, what we are uh, what we are working for in the unit tests, and what we are working with uh -huh. in the deployment, is actually an API. It's a library, so you can use this uh, API to place it in or um, website, let's say. Everything that supports uh, JavaScript and including the libraries is good. The underlying thing is, uh, is InterJS. Maybe if you can click on all of the project for the grammar, and it just, uh, just uh, okay. So basically, this is good. Uh, when you deploy a contract, you end up with a contract wrapper. This contract wrapper actually has an option called contract, and you basically have your contract already deployed. And you can execute any function that you want. And you can see here, like we are deploying like, uh, uh, ISO token, and you're transferring it to one random address. As I said, the first thing is always synchronous. The second thing, we're getting uh, asynchronous uh, transaction that we can decide to purposely wait for. And yeah, this, this API can be used in any manner. It doesn't uh, need to be done with. Uh, 
Yeah, so I'm kind of uh, testing as well. So my question is again for testing. Uh, there is, for, I guess you're supported with what's already done on the actual. The time travel testing with the yes. Yes. Uh, I can go in uh, something else. How do you test it? Or how do you test it? Yeah, usually, I think on the library, so my suggestion was to just do it great. How do you test for your words? For a words? Yeah. No, it's not. So you have this utility function that says respect to the words, respect yeah. to the right? What we have done is we have augmented the, uh, the assert, you know, the insertion yeah. that we already took, so we can now do assert on the word. So if you do assert on the report, you basically get assert that is going to the report. Uh, you raise a very large account for time traveling, I have to talk about that in time traveling. Yeah, if you want to, you might decide that you want to do the job because yeah. usually you want other utility or something to yes. create to it. Exactly, yeah, you definitely will do this in fact. Looking forward to like look forward to get the same uh, issue of uh, all of that. So I'm really glad to do so. Any more questions? It seems so. Okay. In this case, guys, we're going to be looking forward to overhearing this week like on what's in there. Uh, I love that some of you have already used this. I hope that you guys like it. Uh, we're, we're, we really need your feedback because yeah, we cannot think of everything. Uh, obviously, you already gave us a uh, very awesome suggestion. Uh, and yeah, uh, let's go ahead to downstairs to the restaurant, have some beers, network, uh, catch up with each other, and probably see you all next month. By the way, next month we have a couple of things in mind. How many of you are excited about hearing things about plasma? Alright, how many of you are interested about hearing things about uh, universal IDs uh, and other services where you basically execute transactions without having any green or smartphone in your wallet? <laughs> it's going to be hard. Okay. So, yeah, we're still working on things like this, so it's going to be very, very interesting. We, yeah, and if somebody else again, if somebody else wants to share anything that they want with, with us, we are very open. I want to share something. Yeah, well, I confess uh, yesterday Cloudflare announced that uh, we can use the Cloudflare API inside the, um, yeah, the Cloudflare API for iPhone So basically, we can select Cloudflare and put it on the car. Yes, we have put them already. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Nice. Awesome. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah. See you downstairs. <laughs>